Good morning, ladies and gents. We're out very early this morning. Reggie appears to be stalking me. Yeah, we're out this morning. We've, we've grabbed an amazing sunrise. There she is. She's a little bit higher now. We're pretty much down at the lake in Clumber. We're parked at Clumber Park Hotel, if you want to have a look on Google Maps to see where we are. And the lake is just... Well, at the bottom of this heathland. Uh, so yeah, I just thought I'd pick the camera up. I wanted to catch Reggie stalking me as being a weirdo this morning, but you know, as is usually the case, as soon as I did that, he uh, he decides to walk on my side. So that is that. But I just thought I'd share the moment. It's absolutely glorious out here. <clears throat> Now I'm talking rather quietly because for the past two days I've uh, I've spotted a herd of deer but they've just been a little bit f too far away to catch. I got a bit of video yesterday but they were just kind of out of shot and I did want to see if I could catch them again today but with this mist you know visibility is a little bit reduced so chances are I'll not see them. But yeah, look at that. Bit of frost on the heather. Lovely chilly morning. Oh my goodness. I'm not going to work proper today. I've got an eye test. My reading glasses aren't uh, doing the job anymore. So I need an upgrade, I think. So I'll be going, of course, to Specsavers. I mean, where else? The other guy that we used previously. Yeah, I wasn't very happy with him. The service was alright, but the uh, the glasses just never felt right. I could have gone back, I suppose. But I've heard good things about Specsavers because they get through that many people. They've got a really streamlined process and they do a good job. And they'll also image the back of your eye. And they can test for, is it glaucoma and other things like that? I can't remember. Anyway, I'm booked in for a full, a full shebang. So they're going to take a look. Uh, I mean, my, my vision seems fine when I'm out here. It's just if I'm trying to read the small print, you know, like what hops are in a can of beer in a dimly lit pub, then it can be a bit tricky. Oh, look at that sunshine. It's beaming down now. I think I'll leave you with that parting shot. Look at Reggie down there. He's up to something. Oh, I don't think there's any chance of seeing the deer now. We're pretty much at the lake. Don't know if you can see the buildings there in the, in the distance. You know what? The, the camera, I'm sure, does not do this justice. Oh, look in that tree. The nesting box is in there, look. Look what that's for. But it's so nice out here. Every day there's something different. Uh, anyway, I'll probably take a few more shots of anything that's interesting. But today's video, I thought it was about time I cracked open a bottle of the Five Points Best, which I now have at home. I had to be careful not to drink them all, actually, before I did this video. And then next week, we're going to make a batch of the clone beer and there was one outstanding <clears throat> name in the comments in the last video excuse me I've got a bit of a frog in the throat uh, so I think I can't remember who it was I'll just put a little annotation in there but five pints bitter of course it's so obvious now but that's got to be the clone name hasn't it I think so yeah anyway after we've finished our walk, we will jump to uh, maybe whatever else I get up to today. But ultimately, on this video, a review of Five Points Best. Oh look, there's the church. Chances the gatekeeper. Look at what I mean. Now, nobody... 
else in the world is going to see that. Come out, Chance. Come backwards, because I don't know what you'll do. That's wonderful, isn't it? Look, that looks smashing. Let me take a photo of that, I think. Not something I'd normally film. Let's check that out. Some gruesome, I think, bone of a goose or something. It's massive. Chest bone or something like that. That's very weird, isn't it? Anyway, um, I just thought I'd mention, if you like this sort of thing, this, uh, you know, arty-farty morning walk, kind of nice views, little bits and bobs that I've captured, then you should really go onto my Instagram feed, uh, obviously Harrybrew69, where I put most of the pictures and uh, this morning I captured a lovely cobweb with frost all over it silhouetted in the sunshine and here for instance oh there's a bit of a hill there we've got a bank of what appear to be daffodils and crocuses in autumn 2021 21,000 bulbs were planted in this area. Walk to the far side of the lake to enjoy the best spectacle of colour. 21,000 bulbs. There we go. Almost sounds like a, a really shit superhero, doesn't it? 21,000 bulbs. <laughs> to the rescue. Anyway, let's carry on. And that concludes our walk of the Mad March Hares. Run! <laughs> oh, the crackers, aren't they? Get him, Chance. Get him. Run. Weirdos. Go on then. As promised, it is time for the five points best beer review. And it's actually um been a long time coming this because uh, it's been sat in the house for over a week now. I've been meaning to get round to doing it. And now is the time. It took me a while to find any of this. I was hoping to find obviously a local source and perhaps maybe even in can. But I didn't manage to and we went direct to the brewery and ordered these online along with a few other beers. In fact, while I stand that there, I will just let you look at that amazing beverage and I'll go and get the other ones. I've got one of each left. It was close. There was an opportunity for me to drink all these in the past week. And because I'm not going to be doing a review on them, it may have happened. So, in the pack we got 5 points pale. That's 4.4%. Really nice pale. We've got 5 points XP. Uh, that is as good an IPA as I've ever had. And Juper, which is a level up. This is at 5.5 .5 and the XP is at 4. But that's not why we're here today. Shall I just stack that up there like that? So we've got like a, let's do it that way. Five point pyramid. Just on the edge of the camera there. There we go. Why we're here today is of course for this little beauty. Oh, look at that. We've hemmed ourselves in. We're here, that's not gonna, no, no, 
and then we're dropping it. So I want to produce this beer. It is one of my favourite best bitters and after seeing Tricky brew it recently um, and uh, the guys on the craft beer channel, I can't remember his name, Johnny, oh, I can't help myself, I want to drink it. Then obviously realising the recipe is available, it's actually available on the Malt Miller as a kit as well and uh, of course you can see the recipe on Brew's Friend and other places uh, as shared by Tricky and uh, Johnny. So this beer in bottle direct from the brewery no sediment in there I'm assuming it's been filtered I said that last time not filtered um, yeah sorry filtered and possibly pasteurized but uh, I would have definitely said filtered I think it's taken something away from the beer. It doesn't taste like I remember it tasting when I had it on hand pull. Of course it is carbonated in the bottle, so it's going to be a little bit different. I can wait no longer. I'm actually salivating. Oh dear. That is amazing. The smell is bready. Um, very, I mean, malty is quite a broad church in terms of descriptors. See you in a minute my dear. But it really is like traditional beery smell. Now here's one for you. Slight tangent. Did you ever as a kid walk past your local pub and they've got an extractor fan on the side on the tap room maybe and it's blowing the hot air out of the pub and you could smell the beer in that air. Well, I can distinctly remember that at a couple of pubs near our way. And that is like, it's that forbidden fruit of beeriness that is really kind of tantalising. I'm going in. Nice white head. Quite a lot of carbonation. Crystal clear. Mm, mm. Oh, because I'm dying to drink this. This is the best it's tasted out of the uh, half a dozen bottles or so I've already consumed. But the first beer of the day is always the best. Now, on cask it's a little bit smoother. And for me, I do remember it not having quite as harsh a bitter note to it. It was a little bit more... <clears throat> Uh, soft in terms of bitterness it's got some toffee notes in there but they're kind of they're, they're, they're more like bonfire toffee with that bitterness acting upon them thankfully it's not like sucking on a copper penny which is the effect that you might get from some Green King-esque star beers heaven forbid but yeah, this is delicious. So, I've got the computer open in front of me and I've got the Malt Miller's recipe up so I can read to you from the screen what they've got in it. And the ingredients are Simpsons Low Colour Malt, Maris Otter, Simpsons Wheat Malt, Simpsons Amber Malt, Simpsons Crystal Malt, Fuggles, 150 grams, and... WLP 013 London Ale Yeast. Now, they want um, to brew a 20 litre batch at 10.43 with a final gravity of 10.11. Giving you an ABV of 4.1%, which is on the money, and 29 IBUs. Now, this will be interesting. When I replicate this beer, I'm going to try and dial in the IBUs as close as possible. And I'm going to see if indeed it is as bitter as this. I'll be saving a bottle. I've got three left. And I'll be doing a side by side. My daughter's home. There's going to be some racket. Hello. Hello. So I'll be doing a side by side with my new beer, which will be ready in about a month's time. And this one now it's not going to be a fair comparison because mine's going to be on hand pull yes it is 
but nevertheless we'll be able to compare you know the flavor profile and the bitterness and i'm going to see really if it is just 29 ibu as i imagine this recipe is slightly higher but i could be wrong i don't know like the man with the orthopedic leg i could stand corrected and uh, the hop charge for this particular recipe is 40 grams at 60 minutes 30 grams at 15 and then 80 grams at flame out and then there's a link underneath to Johnny's video and uh, yeah it looks like they've shared that on the Malt Miller page as well so I think the only thing I don't like about this recipe on here is um, it is open to variation a little bit because it doesn't give you any grams or percentages of the malt it doesn't give you any IBU content of the hops so you're just putting fuggles in you don't know if those fuggles let's say were 2021 season and they are eight percent alpha acid or if they're 2020 season and they're 6.5 so that's going to have an effect on the final bitterness of the beer now the fuggles i've got i'm not sure um exactly where they are in terms of ibu content i'm just looking on the um website again i'm going to go and have a look at brewer's friend and have a look at their version of the recipe and we'll compare those two so uh richard hall is that tricky dicky's page must be uh so we've got this recipe as 88 percent maris otter extra pale maris four percent wheat malt four percent amber malt and four percent crystal 60 didn't tell you what type of crystal it was on the Malt Miller page. And then we've got the IBU content down at uh, 23 IBUs from the 60 minute edition. 30, uh, sorry, 8.8 .8 IBUs from the 30 gram 15 minute edition. And then interestingly, there are no IBU contributions from the zero minute or flame out edition which we all know is incorrect there will be some isomerization of the hops there so that leads me to believe that wherever they've got this calculation of 26 ibus on the malt miller page of 29 ibus must be related to somebody punching the numbers into a brew calculator such as Bruce friend or beersmith and it spits out that number of 29 IBUs. Now, one thing to bear in mind, I'll just plug my phone in here, it's going to die on me, is I put this recipe into Beersmith, and I played around with the zero-minute edition for Flame Out, and then also adding it as a Whirlpool edition for 30 minutes at 80 degrees. And the 80-degree edition contributed a ton of IBUs to the beer so I think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna just um, run the recipe as is assuming that the 29 IBU figure is round about where they want to be and then when I brew it I'll be using the IBUs that include the Whirlpool edition so mine will say it's considerably higher on paper but we're going to use the exact same hop regime a couple of other things that are going to change when i brew this beer so it isn't exactly going to be a five point best clone but it is uh you know that's the put that's that's the brewery and the beer that we're looking up to to emulate and to come close to uh but it's distinctly going to be different in terms of recipe first of all i don't have any amber molten at the brewery and considering the fact that there are only like 225 grams going into a batch such as this, I'll have a look at putting a substitute in there that's relatively close. I'll probably go with something like Cara 30 or Cara 10, something like that, just to add that little dimension. And then we've also got the yeast. Now, I don't have any, um, what was it, WLP... Uh, to, 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 to scroll back up again 
013 London Ale Yeast. So what I'm going to use is the WHC or WCH labs, I forget which way around that is. They've got a yeast on there called Old English, so that's the one that we're going to be using. See you in a bit. Another interruption. Are you going to interrupt me now as well? Okay. So there are a couple of variations there in the recipe that I'm going to be doing moving forwards. But you know what? It really is more of a tribute to the quality and um, the, the, how well brewed Five Points Best actually is that I want to emulate this myself. Now I think my best bitter on cask is as good as any and I've had feedback to say the same but I'm open to the fact uh, open I'm open to the fact that all beer recipes are of course dynamic and you can improve on anything so we're going to try and emulate this and match it we're not going to try and improve upon it um but I know that the beers that I've made in the past could be improved upon and we'll use what we learn from this to help improve our best bitter as well. Although I think I'd upset a lot of people if I changed it too much. Oh, it's an extremely quaffable beer. So on the Malt Miller page, there are five reviews for this beer. And they're all five stars by the looks of things. So we've got Paul Johnson on the, 20, uh, the 7th of February 2021. He says it's a great recipe that produces a very English ale. I subbed Amber for Munich. I love Munich malt and I used SO4 yeast. Definitely brewing again. There we go. Somebody who's doing a very similar thing to me. I might look at Munich. I've got some Munich in stock. So thanks, Paul. Then we've got Stephen Lyon. Uh, he's a verified owner, so he's bought the kit from Montmiller for sure. A must try recipe that produces a great example of a modern bitter. Notes of sweet caramel are perfectly balanced by the grassy bitterness from the Fuggles hops. The WLP013 London Ale yeast imparts a real oak character which combines with the bitterness but uh, with the bittersweet flavours to produce a very well-rounded Moorish beer. So somebody else who's really happy with this beer. And we've got Chris Channing and uh, again another verified buyer. This is a fantastic modern ale, very sessionable with a big hit and and a big hit with family members and then of course Rob Dagley this turned out great dare I say as good as the real thing thanks to Five Points and Malt Miller for bringing this to us Britta filtered I Britta filtered my South London water and I added 0 0.6776 grams of DWB per litre and got excellent results. So there we go Rob. And then finally Andrew Booth left a review. Just brewed this five points best bitter kit. I've got to say one of the best beers I've drank. Very bitter and dry the way a best bitter should be. Well there we go. He's reflecting on the fact that the bitterness is there in this beer even though the IBUs only reflect of course uh, 29 bittering units and we may note that the final gravity of this beer is also uh, 10 11 so that means oh it's 10 14 on tricky's recipe actually but uh, yeah on the malt miller description we did have yeah 10 11 so the uh, ibu to FG ratio or SG ratio is kind of in the middle of the road there so I dare say it is higher than uh, 29 IBUs we'll have to have a look where that comes in at the calculator and that's how I brew it actually if I could get the um, IBU to OG ratio then that's a better target than just using loosely um, thrown around grams of hops, I guess. So there we go. A few thoughts on the uh, upcoming brew day. It's going to be Monday, I think. If not Monday, Tuesday. And we're going to be bashing out a five pints.
best bit then. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.